Warzone 2 Season 3 has just gone live and today we're going to be covering off all the patch notes and all the major game changes from the new weapons to movement buffs to sniper buffs as well so they can one shot now. We're going to be covering it all in Warzone 2. So without any further wait, let's jump straight into it. So they've added a couple of new operators, Alejandro and Valeria. They've also updated Ricochet Anti-Cheat. Essentially, we should just see less cheaters in the game going forward, so that should be really useful. Um, as well, the Battle Pass system has slightly changed. They've now added a premium option called the Black Cell. Um, basically, you're going to get a lot of, uh, in this current season, a load of black and gold operators, skins, and weapon blueprints as well. Basically, you're still going to be able to access the base season pass as well, so don't worry about that. You don't have to fork out. I think it's 25 or 30 pounds or dollars for the premium battle pass but you don't need to be forking out all of that to get it you can still just pay what was it 1100 cod points just for the basic battle pass so there are some additional benefits for going for the black cell you're just going to get a lot more quality items in there as well as getting some more cod points as well i think and various other things but without jumping into that in too much detail I, I, it's probably best you go look what's worthwhile for you so they've also added a new in-game event called trophy hunt basically whenever you kill ai players and or looting you're going to be coming across trophies in warzone 2 these trophies are going to be claimable for weapon blueprints vehicle skins and battle pass tokens and those who redeem enough items will be able to unlock some exclusive operator skins for their efforts now you can't just collect these and just count that towards your total you are going to need to in warzone 2 at the very least upload these at an upload station or win the match so these upload stations that you can see right here are probably going to be quite contested and probably count as people are going to want to farm these a little bit um as well you could just win the game but <laughs> if you want to say in solos that's a one in 150 chance uh, probably not the best method to go for for these um you can also do this in multiplayer and dmz as well which are probably going to be the fact i say probably definitely going to be the easier options dmz being the free option multiplayer being the paid for option which will definitely be the easiest way of getting all of them but again they just want you to buy the game and spend money so uh, it's understandable and now looking at the progression you can get up to level 650 so yeah that is what it is. And the new weapon unlock challenges for the ISO Hemlock get 20 long shot kills with an assault rifle. KV Broadside, 10 one shot kills with a shotgun, which is actually going to be incredibly difficult in Warzone 2. Um, very easy in multiplayer, but incredibly difficult in Warzone 2 because I think there's only one shotgun. One shot's a fully plated enemy. So that'd be interesting. And then the dual melee weapon, you're just going to need to get 20 kills with a melee weapon. Again, a very difficult thing, but not as difficult, I don't think, as this probably wait till plunder comes out for that sort of thing and obviously you can just do the camo mastery challenges for the new weapons but we'll get onto those in a little bit and a new set of prestige sticker book challenges as well so moving on to the new weapons for those of you that played the original modern warfare 2 so the 2009 edition for a lot of you probably want to touch that looking at the audience that i've got on this channel the fjx Imperium was the intervention now this was the incredibly loved sniper rifle so a lot of people are really hoping that they're going to do it justice but it's a anti-personnel bolt action sniper rifle that apparently is quite hard hitting and with the update snipers again we'll move on to it in a little bit more detail later on you can now one shot with them with explosive rounds of which this should have but that's only for the bolt action snipers but we'll move on to that later and then taking a look at the other new weapon we've got the cronin school battle rifle which is a semi-automatic battle rifle that should be good for those longer ranges apparently with an exceptional damage output knowing call of duty this is probably going to absolutely tear apart like the iso hemlock has and be the meta going forwards and sniper rifles being one shot now um, or some of them this is probably going to be quite good as well so moving on to the weapon balancing i could be here forever going through this in quite a lot of detail but i'm just going to tell you my initial thoughts on it and whether it's been buffed or nerfed so the iso hemlock has been nerfed probably not the top dog anymore probably looking at the attack 56 as that has been buffed the m13 has also been buffed and then the stb 556 has also been buffed as well so the stb 556 actually might be up there as a meta i do think its bullet velocity is a little bit bad so i think the attack 56 is going to be the meta going forwards in the assault rifle category for the battle rifles the ftac recon has been buffed but it's not really 
relevant because its recoil is just the issue with it. The Lackman 7.62 movement speed increased. We might see it as an SMG going forward, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. And then the SO14 buffed as well, and then the TAC-V has also been buffed, but I don't think we're going to see those going forward still. So the handgun, the basilisk, or the magnum, as most people call it, has been nerfed. That's to stop it being so overpowered. It's a good thing. The Royal LMG has kind of been nerfed, but buffed in semi-automatic mode, which is kind of an odd thing. But overall, I would say it's a nerf and probably not something you need to worry about. And then the RPK has also been nerfed for some reason. That's not been relevant for a while. And then the Tempest Torrent has also been nerfed quite heavily. That thing was actually really good, but it's recoil is a bit of an issue, which made it not work at range. And then moving on to the submachine guns, submachine gun hit spread accuracy has been increased overall, making hit fire builds much more relevant going forwards. So the Bass P has been buffed as well. So that's probably a good thing, but I still don't think it's going to be relevant as it's time to kill just wasn't fast enough. And then the Lackman sub has has been nerfed only on headshot damage but the burst fire has been buffed slightly which is odd but hey so we're probably still going to see the Lackman sub quite dominant going forwards. Then we're going to look at all three of these. The MX-9 has been buffed in terms of sprint to fire speed increase and then the Vaznev 9k headshot damaging and then the Vaznev 9k and the Vel 46 have both had their headshot damage decreased which I don't think is going to make an overall world of difference because their time to kill is still incredibly fast. I think the Vaznev 9k might start eking in a little bit more with some of the further attachment changes which we'll get onto in just a second but I think feel like the Vaznev 9k is probably going to be the go-to this season so if you haven't leveled it up and you're looking for something to level up the Vaznev 9k and the TAC 56 are going to be the go-to I've just made a video for the TAC 56 which I'll link on screen now in the card section and at the end of the video a great beginner bully leveled and pro level attachment guides so giving you attachments for all stages and that's a lot of what my videos consist of as well so really useful for a lot of people that don't have a lot of time to play the game so moving on to the attachments overall they've kind of buffed and nerfed a lot of things here so just quickly going through again the basilisk and um, snake shot rounds have been nerfed again making the magnum less effective now looking at explosive rounds for bolt action sniper rifles with explosive ammunition are now able to fully down a fully armored player in one shot they've not specified that this is just headshot that's presumably what it would be but watch out for those anywhere in the body downs as well the explosive rounds have been added to the mcpr 300 progression tree as well so you should be able to use it on there but it's only the bolt action sniper rifles in the game that being said the explosive ammunition rounds are very low bullet velocity so it will make it a little bit tricky to hit those longer range shots and then looking at the iso hemlock the 0.300 blackout rounds have kind of been nerfed and buffed a little bit balanced um mainly enough though the recoil has gone insane on them by the looks of it and then looking at barrels this is some really interesting changes actually and something you really want to be paying attention to these next section of attachment changes so the barrel for the heavy barrels ads speed penalty has slightly been reduced and then for the light barrels the muzzle velocity penalty has also been reduced and then for the short barrels the ads speed benefits have been increased damage range penalty reduced hip spread accuracy benefit increased whilst moving and firing and then the hip spread accuracy penalty for shotguns decreased whilst they are moving and firing so overall they've kind of summarized it a little bit here but basically they have buffed the buffs and nerfed the nerfs so the nerfs are no longer as bad and the buffs that they offer are more effective so overall we are just going to see guns being a little bit more mobile as they've reduced the immobility of a lot of weapons and overall just made things a lot better to make the gameplay feel a little bit smoother and take less time to aim down your sight as well because it does feel like it takes a while at the moment with a bipod the ads speed penalty has been reduced and lasers have had their brightness massively increased i guess that's because they're pretty much invisible as is i don't think i've ever seen one or really noticed one and then for the magazines the light machine guns handling and movement penalties have been reduced overall we're going to see a lot more mobility here and then for all these guns here for the cast off 545 60 round magazine uh, all of these have had their handling penalty reduced for the cast off 762 the 40 round mag the lackman sub 50 round mag the m13b the 60 round mag the M16, the 60 round mag, the Vaznev 9K, the 45 round mag, the Vel 46 50 round and the 60 round mag as well. And this is where I'm saying the Vaznev 9K might be the meta going forwards as the ADS has felt particularly clunky on this gun a little bit. So you might be able to use this gun quite effectively going forwards now, depending on how much they've reduced the penalty of the handling. 
And then for the small magazines in game, the movement speed increased and sprint fire has also been increased. But we're not really going to see these being used in Warzone 2 because you don't tend to use, in fact, I don't think I've ever seen anyone use the small magazines. But this is quite interesting. For the Fennec 45, the Fennec double tap mod has been buffed overall quite significantly, which actually we're going to have to wait for the stats to come out. But this could be an interesting one to watch here, guys, and definitely worth testing out. I know it's going to be on the top of my list to test out because this wasn't a terrible attachment in the first place yes it had barely any ammo on it but for solos this could be really interesting and then for the stb 556 the single tap mod they look like they're going to be trying to make this meta going forwards guys a damage increase mid-range damages distance increased the minimum armor damage added and then time between shots increased so for the single tap being bar this it's been buffed quite heavily so it could be interesting the stb 556 is another one that you want to be probably leveling up going forwards it's going to be meta if not there or there they're about sort of A tier instead of S tier. So really good one here. For the rear grips, for the basilisk, again, this has been nerfed for the akimbo grip. And then looking at the stocks for the heavy stocks, the ADS speed penalty has been reduced. Aiming stability benefit increased. And then the aim walking steadiness benefit increased as well. This is going to be useful on nothing because I don't think you really take stocks on many guns, if any whatsoever. Maybe bar snipers. This is probably useful on snipers with the heavy stocks. But again, yeah, probably not massively. And general on the blueprints the pro tuning no longer removed all the attachment tunings or attachments when altering a pro tuned blueprint which is useful i guess but watch my videos for all the best tunings and attachments anyway now for the perk bomb squad explosive damage mitigation now applies to armor as well i didn't actually realize it was just to health this should be quite a good positive buff in the game and then damage feedback visual feedback has been adjusted to increase visibility when taking damage so instead of your screen going red and making it very hard to see any enemies when you're shooting this should be less <laughs> now so you should have a bit more clarity and then death effects are visible when killing an ai diving has had the fire delay reduced it actually could be interesting now i feel like they're pushing the game more towards diving than sliding because slide speed slightly has been increased which i don't feel like is a it's a big thing here maybe other than when you're trying to get behind cover um but it feels more like this is an escape tactic and this is more like going after someone because the diving fire delay has now been reduced now looking at the field upgrades they've added a thermal vision to the tactical camera for night map modes probably not relevant for warzone 2 and then looking at the equipment changes gas grenades should no longer detonate enemy explosives and with the claymores in warzone 2 only armor damage has been reduced and for the flash grenade the flash effect duration has been reduced which is probably a really good thing and then for the frag grenade one hit kill radius against fully armored players has been reduced so you need to really be quite accurate with them now you kind of did beforehand I don't feel like this is particularly needed. Frag grenades were barely used. And then for proximity mine, they've kind of changed it back down to Warzone 1. So armor damage reduction against crouched or prone players. Then also armor damage reduced as well. And Semtex is now killed down player when stuck as it should. And then looking at kill streaks. A lot of these changes are just MW2. Bar this, reduced screen shake for precision airstrikes, explosions. Now the bomb drones can no longer fully down a fully armored player. We really needed this because they were terrible, especially in solos. Cost of mines have also had their armor damage reduction as well, so they shouldn't be as prominent going forwards. Really weird change because I don't feel like it was needed. You can now melee the windows to destroy them in vehicles, and you can also pop tires with a knife. I guess there's some added realism, but was it needed? Could they have spent that time? elsewhere probably but it is a massive update so we've got that to be thankful of they've also changed some audio this isn't really relevant it's just some more sound settings but they have had some refinements to footstep and occlusion mixes hopefully this should make them or footsteps more prominent when you've got things like gunfire and airstrikes landing in cluster strikes and things like this and mortar strikes etc this should just bring them to the forefront a little bit more social <sighs> Yeah, some quality of life changes and this recruit a friend program now as well where you can earn some rewards. Probably quite useful for us content creators. I'm going to see if I can get that going. And if so, it'll be in the description of this channel if you're new to the game. Um, so yeah, check that out. Then the UI slash UX changes some additional stuff here. You can now preview traces and death effects that come with weapon blueprints. And then they've had some various bug fixes. I'm not going to run through those because there tends to be a lot of them. They've added some PC settings. So keybind presets, 
Yeah, interesting. Um, gyro ratcheting as well. So you can sort of turn it on and off mid game, not have to go into your settings. You can just um, bind that to a button or something like that. So yeah, it'd be interesting. And then over to a map update for Ashika Island. They've added a cargo ship and several submarines and now present outside of port. Now looking at the gameplay changes, tempered plate carry has been added to the game. This can be found in strongholds and loot, probably quite rare in loot, but basically it works like in Warzone 1. So tempered now makes you equip two, uh, tempered makes you attach two armor plates instead of three now this doesn't reduce your overall armor count this just means that each armor plate counts for more armor so each armor plate counts for 75 instead of the standard 50 just basically means you can armor up that little bit quicker should make some for some more exciting gameplay as they've mentioned here and i've mentioned beforehand the bomb drone balancing can no longer one hit kill a fully armored player which is a very welcomed addition to the game and for the heavy chopper they've re-enabled it for every game mode however it now needs unique gas cans for it so you can't just use the ones that you find in the fuel stations or anything like that the spawn location will differ from battle royale to dmz but in battle royale one of five possible spawn locations will spawn a heavy gas can for each match and one heavy chopper gas can is is included as a guaranteed stronghold mission reward so it's no longer just get this early game and just stay floating and just hit those fuel stations although you can hit those fuel stations still and just grab those gas cans you now need to get specific ones so it should limit the effectiveness of this late game i'm surprised they've not mentioned about nerfing its overall health now explosives are more useful in this as well as it mentions here really they needed to lower the overall health i think a little bit so it's probably going to be a little bit of a menace for those people that get it it, those sweaty squads are probably going to have a bit of a whale of a time with this so with the gas masks they have given a slight buff to when players take it on or take it off which should just help certain situations so it should just be a little bit more fluid and you should just get caught out a little bit less when you're in gunfights and coming in and out of the gas now interrogation has been altered slightly so decreases the amount of time that it takes to interrogate an enemy from five seconds down to three which is really useful and they've also added a grace period if the player is downed so if the down player is a immediately killed after a successful interrogation you only get one ping from the interrogation radar but if you keep them alive it should just keep going basically is the general gist of things so quality of life changes mantle assist improvements has been done and the advanced uav improvements as well you should be able to tell the difference between enemy players and ai combatants going forwards which is a big thing here really useful because it was so annoying shoving up an advanced uav near a stronghold or something like that and just seeing well there's tons of enemies no longer should be the case this is a big one guys so do you know when you were in middle of a gunfight and someone chucks a precision airstrike and all of a sudden the middle of your screen is just saying warning incoming precision airstrike they've now moved this <laughs> so you can actually see where you're aiming instead of just having it come up above you and then some more bug fixes here with battle royale the playlists have been updated in almazra so you're now getting standard duos trios and quads kind of makes it look like they've taken out solos which is an odd choice you've also got massive resurgence for trios and quads now just think ashika island resurgence style but for almazra so same sort of thing but you've got assimilation for um assimilation basically meaning you can bring in enemies to your team but you've got that for standard duos trios and quads but not for the resurgence game modes at all and then taking a look at the modes this just talks about the massive resurgence in a little bit more detail you know how ashika island works but they've also got a hunt track mechanic basically at any point during a match eliminating an enemy player will display a squad of members for a few seconds on the mini map a bit like in warzone 1 and then specific to solos eliminating an enemy player will display their location upon redeployment for 10 seconds basically to stop them diving straight on their loot so probably quite useful for the guy that's just killed them not so useful the person that's just died but that's the way it should be i guess and then score events as well basically this is to sort of bring that down but all the various things here pause it read it in a little bit more detail but it's yeah and then with loadouts basically you can buy them or get them on the first way round of loadouts yeah not massive changes for the resurgence mode here and then the additional information for the game mode strongholds are disabled and weapons can be found via ground loot but they've always got attachments and blue resurgence supply boxes restock after 90 seconds then we've got world series of war zones if you like a bit of esports or want to watch some really good players play uh, this is going to be really interesting just google world series of Warzone. 
And then this is all just generally private matches and stuff. However, the bird's eye perk has been re-enabled to the game. They've made some changes though. So now activates when a player uses a UAV kill streak. Enemy UAVs no longer trigger bird's eye. UAVs activated by player using a bird's eye will provide enemy headings. And UAV pings activated by player using bird's eye are slightly larger. And then looking at the map changes for our Mazra. So the black site, new gulag basically small rectangular asymmetrical map which has some long routes and some short range routes depending on the gun that you've got and then looking at the gameplay changes for the map so they've got uav towers like in dmz basically you go up to it spend some time activating it and you get a uav sweep in from that area from the uav tower this lasts for a certain amount of time and then deactivates after that dmz you can keep reactivating them over and over again so it could be quite interesting and useful probably quite a lot of campers there but this will cost 2000 per activation and last for 20 seconds each time and now taking a look at a few more redeploy drones have been added from ashika island and this was also in warzone 1 why it's taken so long to come into the game basically you can shoot up these redeploy drones and redeploy elsewhere going to be really interesting and useful to rotate around the map quite quickly however we'll begin leaving the field around the fourth circle we've also added some I guess little missions in game so you can hold positions from stronghold basically locate and defend a position inside a stronghold from enemies the stronghold will be attacked by continuous reinforcements until the operation is complete and then for the black sites new stronghold objective has just been added in rohan oil or near it i should say actually in the northern sector of the map it says champion's quest new weapon blueprint reward go find out if you can pretty sure champion's quest is the nuke so probably not relevant for most of us they've also decreased the time pause between gas movement circles hopefully just leading to to a faster gameplay because that mid game does feel very slow so hopefully they're just going to speed that up a little bit and then they've also just changed the most wanted contract so supply drops will now drop on every successful completion of the contract however every team can now see the crates icon on the tack map so looking at stronghold rewards they've changed the amount of stronghold supply boxes from two down to one but have increased the amount of loot found in white stronghold supply boxes they've also changed the intel contract in our masra so you no longer need to go and find the laptop However, it does take 17 seconds instead of 10 seconds to do the upload. Overall, it's going to be quite useful because you don't have to run off and find a laptop, so it's going to be a lot quicker. However, you also do get some additional loot as well from completing this. Buy stations, they've made a lot of changes. Gas masks and portable radars have now have an unlimited stock. They've made a lot of cost changes here. Um, more notably, the kill streaks or the precision airstrike and the counter UAV have been reduced down in cost, and things like armor boxes have been increased in cost. But they have also increased the amount of spawn locations for buy stations up to 42 from 31. So it should be a little bit harder to camp all of them and should bring a little bit more consistently, hopefully populated a few more of those dead areas. They've also added some additional locations for ammo caches across the map. And they've made some quality of life changes to Ashika Island Resurgence, but they've not really said what. <laughs> some more quality of life changes. So minimap ping anchoring. So they now look a little bit different when they're outside of the minimap. Quite what that is. So hopefully some more clarity there. Spawn protection timeout so basically instead of just having so you could float for i don't know 30 seconds or something like that but not be within that sort of range from the floor to wherever it was i think it was like was it 30 or 40 meters away from the floor where before you could be shot and killed it now expires after 10 seconds or when you get to that point on the ground basically stopping people hanging in the air for ages so 10 seconds is now the max before you're going to get beamed black site key visibility has changed so all the squads can find it on the tack map and loadout drop visuals have been changed so your loadout is blue and the contested loadouts so the ones that drop from the air without you calling it in are now yellow they've also changed the object elevation arrows for buy station contracts loot items as well so they've got a little up and down arrow which should be useful going forwards so that's it for the warzone 2 season 3 changes there are some dmz changes as well I'll link the blog post to the description below. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. But for all the best loadouts going forwards, check out my channel to see those. I also do some guides as well. But yeah, thanks for watching all the way to the end, guys. Thanks. Bye.